This lecture is on cardiac CT physics. We want to discuss various aspects of physics behind cardiac CT imaging. So, what are the essential components needed for cardiac imaging? From the physics standpoint of view, we need high temporal resolution that's required to image coronary segments proximal to heart. So, therefore, the modality should be able to provide high temporal resolution. High temporal resolution means very fast acquisition, which means in CT translate to faster Gantt rotation time. The second essential component needed for cardiac imaging is high spatial resolution. High spatial resolution is needed to image proximal coronary segment uh, such as RCA, LAD, and CX, which are of submillimeter size, and they run in all direction around the heart. Therefore, high spatial resolution means we need high spatial resolution in all three dimensional. The third component is high contrast to noise ratio. Since we want to resolve small structures such as plaques, the contrast to noise ratio has to be really high. The last component essential for cardiac imaging is high low contrast resolution with limited radiation exposure, which means which demands for shorter exposure time is key. Here in this slide, I want to explain what's, which part of the um, heartbeat is more feasible for cardiac imaging. So it's shown here is the diastolic phase, which is less disturbing compared to the systolic phase versus the heartbeat. So the least cardiac motion is observed during diastolic phase. Also, the diastolic phase narrows with increasing heart rate. That's one of the reasons why in cardiac imaging, we want the heart rate to be as stable and as slow as possible. Therefore, we can have a large, longer diastolic phase. For example, in this particular diagram, if the R2 is if it's a 60 beats per minute, that means the space between one R or one systolic peak to the next systolic peak is 1000 millisecond. That's an ideal situation where we can image in the diastolic phase. Therefore, the desired temporal resolution for motion-free cardiac imaging is you need up at least 250 millisecond um, temporal resolution for heart rates greater than um, 70 beats per minute or even less or faster like 150 millisecond for heart rates greater than 100 beats per minute. Ideally, the motion-free imaging during other phases requires temporal resolution of nearly 50 millisecond. So, the diastolic phase has to be as long as possible. If not, the imaging has to be done as fast as possible. Why is it important that we do the imaging in the diastolic phase, not in the systolic phase? Shown here in the two images on this panel is um, a cardiac image reconstructed at different point in this R to R um, cycle at different phase. Let's say if the image is reconstructed around very close to the systolic phase, 10% of the R to R peak. As you can see here in the, in the diagram, as uh, shown in green circle, the coronary segment is not focused because of the lot of motion. At the same time, if the same image is reconstructed the 70% from the R peak, in, in a more quiescent phase or in the diastolic phase, the coronary segment is lot more focused coronary artery seem to be more focused and that's one of the reason why it's desired to have a cardiac reconstruction done um, in the diastolic phase more far away from the systolic peak. Second part is in cardiac CT or in any other cardiac uh, any other uh, CT imaging the choice of the technique depends on the type of clinical indication we are looking for. Best example here in the cardiac CT is we can clearly show that uh, the tube current can be changed or can be adjusted based on what type of protocol we are using. Two example, on the left hand side is the calcium score image which requires very low tube current even because the reason is the end point is calcification which shows up even when the background is very noisy. That allows the user to um, set the technique at a very low technique therefore calcium scoring studies are one of the low dose technique on the right hand side is the image of the ct and geography image where we are trying to image very fine coronary segment 
which demands in turn demands a very high tube current. So, examining the scan parameter in image quality in CG, we had discussed in the previous lecture on scan parameters, but I just want to highlight one component which is very important for cardiac CT, such as the scan acquisition type. I consider the scan acquisition type to be one of the primary factors um, in the CT which has an impact on both the image quality and radiation dose. And this is even more important in cardiac CT because that's where we have a different type of acquisition. The two main type of uh, scan acquisition, one is the uh, retrospective ECG gated and prospective triggering uh, studies. Let's say examine what's the first type of reconstruction. The most common uh, methodology done in cardiac CT is through retrospective ECG gating. In fact, when we started doing cardiac CT um, in CT, uh, cardiac CT, this is the methodology was usually started off where when um, the images were reconstructed retrospectively, the methodology is as follows. The patient is monitored continuously. The ECG signal of the patient is monitored and matched with the, with the scanner. And then the scanner is turned on to acquire data while the patient is transported through the gantry, resulting in continuous acquisition of the data until the heart volume is covered, which basically means that the um, the, uh, the, the radiation exposure occurs throughout the heart cycle and multiple of the heart cycle until the data, until the volume is covered. Afterwards, retrospectively, we reconstruct only part of the data, um, such as in the diastolic phase, and rest of it is disregarded. This has a very high temporal resolution. However, the same, but the radiation dose to the patient is penalized because you are acquiring um, throughout the heart cycle and some of the data is disregarded. Shown here is a, is a, a cartoon showing uh, the retrospective ECG method, ECG gating methodology on a 64 slice scanner. The, in a 64 slice CT scanner, the maximum volume coverage is only 40 millimeter. When we have 40 millimeter of coverage, you need to cover the heart through multiple heartbeats. When we are doing these things, we tend to overlap the areas in order to avoid some data gaps and cover through the heartbeat. In, in, in retrospective ECG gating, the radiation exposure or the X-rays are turned on throughout the heart cycle uh, until the heart is covered. Therefore, the and once it is done, then only part of the data is used for reconstructed and everything else is thrown out. The second component is important in the parameter is the pitch. Uh, as defined earlier, the radiation dose is inversely proportional pitch and pitch is defined as a ratio of the table feed per gantry rotation divided by the total beam width. So let's examine here um, some of the CT display and how we can make sense of these cardiac CT procedures. Um, as, a, as discussed earlier, the right now on all, most of all the scanners, there is information available regarding say a radiation dose while the technology sets the scans. And after the scan is done, we can have what is called as the post scan display. Shown here on the right hand side on the bottom is a dose report from a particular vendor wherein it shows each um, uh, CT series along with the type, type of tube voltage selected and the, uh, and the type of uh, uh, the radiation output and so forth. The second type of uh, cardiac CT acquisition is the prospective ECG triggering. So the prospective ECG triggering is as follows. In this case, the entire heart rate, heartbeat is not exposed to radiation. The radiation, the X-ray tube is turned on at certain point of the R cycle and therefore a limited radiation exposure occurs during the, um, each part of the heartbeat. Um, thereby the radiation dose is minimized. It's also called as step and shoot method. So shown here for example the same 64 slice scanner um, operating in a prospective ECG triggering method wherein the volume acquisition is still 40 millimeter therefore 
the scanner will acquire 40 millimeter of data and move to a next location and then acquire subsequent data and it does the same thing repeats until the entire heart volume is covered. As shown here is um, each data set is, uh, is collected either subsequent heartbeats or, um, um, or different heartbeats and then combined to, for, to reconstruct the image. This allows to minimize the radiation exposure because it is the radiation exposure does not occur throughout the heartbeats. Shown here is an example to demonstrate the difference between the prospective triggering and helical retrospective gated method. On this figure shown is a, a radiochromic film exposed on the x-ray table uh, undergoing a prospective ECG triggering protocol and also helical retrospective ECG gated protocol. As can, one can see in the prospective ECG triggered, triggered protocol, um, the volume is only acquired at a certain point. There is no um, of over or under exposure or overlapping of the exposure. In the helical or retrospective ECG gated protocol, since it is a helical acquisition, there is a ramp up and ramp down of the helix. Therefore, and also there is a lot of overlap of this area throughout the heartbeat. So, the radiation dose typically is higher in helical retrospective gated method compared to the prospective triggering. This is demonstrated in a multi-center clinical trial wherein the CT and geography dose are compared between the prospectively prospective gated versus retrospective ECG gating. Shown in this study called the protection 1 study, the helical mode resulted in effective dose about 11.2 millisievert whereas a sequential mode are also called as a prospective mode result in a radiation dose of 3.6 millisievert, almost one fourth the dose of a helical CT uh, procedure. And that can is also observed here in a patient dose chart. A dose report randomly picked um, back in 2011 and 2007. In 2007, when we were doing lot of these uh, uh, retrospective ECG gating studies, the radiation dose from these particular procedure could be as high as up to 15 millisievert and now with that uh, as you can see in 2011 when we started doing this uh, prospective triggering methodology the dose has really come down uh, almost to one half to one third of the dose level. There are a number of things which has enhanced or uh, enhanced the ability to do cardiac CT at a much lower dose. Among them is the scanner technology. It's, one of the first main technology was the wide detector technology also called as the volume detector. In this technology such as this uh, shown here is a 320 detector multi detector CT. The entire cardiac volume or heart volume can be covered in a single gantry rotation because the number of detectors here is 320 detector and each detector size is approximately 0.5 millimeter. Therefore, in a single gantry rotation, you can one can acquire a data of nearly 160 millimeter or 16 centimeter of volume. So, when when the patient is positioned properly in the ISO center of the gantry, the patient's heart can be covered in a one single sweep. Therefore, it avoids all these overlaps and so forth. And this can be done by by exposing the radiation exposure on the heartbeat a very limited way in just one part of the heart, one part of the RR cycle or within two RR cycle. The second type of uh, um, the detector technology or the CT technology is the dual source CT. In the dual source CT, uh, there are two x-ray tube positioned uh, per, uh, at 90 degrees uh, wherein the detector uh, is opposite end. This results in availability to acquire data at a much faster rate thereby increasing the uh, temporal resolution. So compared to a single source CT uh, and dual source CT, in a dual source CT the temporal resolution can be as high as one fourth the quarter, one fourth the rotation of the gantry cycle. Therefore the temporal resolution can be as much as one third to one fourth of the gantry rotation time and that is very unique with respect to the dual source CT. The way the dual source CT uh, scan is done is 
uh, one can acquire in what is called as a high pitch cardiac CT scan because even with the high pitch, the data from uh, the simultaneous detector is interleaved to, uh, to accommodate the data within the one hour to hour cycle, therefore um, avoiding uh, excessive exposure to the other heart cycles and so forth. There are a number of uh, radiation dose reduction strategies available for cardiac CT. Among them, the most common one is the utilization of the ECG gated tube current modulation. The other strategies is minimizing the scan range in cardiac CT will automatically minimize the radiation exposure. Heart rate reduction will allow uh, a good uh, acquisition of good uh, cardiac CT data. Nowadays, we also have what is called as reduced tube voltage uh, uh, shift in suitable patient which automatically reduce the dose and increase the contrast. The other strategies include performing calcium scoring only when needed and to utilize what is called as the sequential scanning or prospective triggering method. Also de developed recently is the iterative reconstruction methods when applied to cardiac CT acquisition allow us to do uh, acquire data at a very low dose exposure and still reconstruct and improve the image quality. So, what is CT dose modulation? In one of the previous uh, podcasts, I discussed at length the tube current dose modulation and discussed there are two type of tube current modulation, well, such as spatial dose modulation and the second one is called the temporal dose modulation. So, spatial dose modulation works as follows. Since the patients are not circular, the there is higher attenuation in the lateral direction and lower X-ray attenuation in the AP direction. Therefore, there is a possibility to lower the tube current based on the patient thickness. And that's what is normally done in the spatial dose modulation. However, the most commonly done in cardiac CT is the temporal dose modulation. The temporal dose modulation can be thought as follows. It is based on modulating tube current at specified time points of an ECG signal. This is the method utilized in cardiac CT protocol. The spatial dose modulation is used in most body CT protocol and if somebody tells it's a tumor current modulation, they pretty much of the time they always imply spatial dose modulation. Only in cardiac CT pro 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 protocols, we don't do spatial dose modulation. Uh, we do temporal dose modulation. So let's examine what is temporal dose modulation. Shown here on this figure is a um, various acquisition scheme. On the top panel is the acquisition scheme and the yellow, yellow box shows the radiation exposure um, of, uh, undertaken for the particular procedure. As described earlier, a retrospectively gated helical scanning required uh, acquiring data across the multiple heartbeats and the ex radiation exposure is turned on throughout multiple heartbeats. So the total exposure to the, pa uh, to the patient is as shown in the top box, the yellow box. Now, if we do what is called as the ECG based tube current modulation, which basically tells us like lowering the tube current around the systolic portion of the, uh, of the scan and ramping the tube current around the diastolic part of the scan, thereby allowing some dose reduction. Compared to the top panel, the second panel you can see all the white gaps is actually the dose saving uh, while undergoing ECG based tube current modulation. Further down in the third panel shown is the prospectively triggered method, where the prospectively triggered method is not even exposing around the systolic area, the scanner is turned on only at a certain point in the diastolic phase. Therefore, compared to the top one, the third panel is much lesser dose. The fourth panel basically shows the same thing as the third panel, however, it's slightly padded. By mean padding means to extending the width of the time scale required uh, uh, in the diastolic phase where the radiation exposure is occurs. Therefore, you have some extraneous data uh, to make sure that the data is sufficient, data is available for reconstruction. The last panel demonstrates the possibility to acquire the cardiac CT data in a single heartbeat 
uh, especially with the volume detector or with the dual source CT. So, conceptually, without even doing any physics measurement, conceptually one can appreciate the amount of dose saving from the top panel to the bottom panel. In the top panel, the retrospective ECG, um, retrospectively gated helical scan, the radiation exposure was larger because the multiple heartbeats the radiation exposure occurred throughout the multiple heartbeats well as in the last one it's only acquiring in one heartbeat and that too in a limited portion of the diastolic phase that's also one of the reason why we are able to do cardiac ct at a much lower dose now with this type of technology and the methodology finally i want to talk about iterative reconstruction iterative reconstruction can be thought of as an objective our uh, objective is to enable user to acquire CT data at low dose and improve image quality with iterative process. One can consider this iterative reconstruction uh, process as more like a black box uh, and it is kept due to ma manufacturer preparedness. So, but however, it can be understood as follows. So, you are acquiring the data at a low technique and then reconstructing with some comparative a mathematical model uh, to improve the image quality. Generally, shown here is a multi, uh, multi center study, protection 5 study, where they have done a iterative reconstruction uh, versus the filter back projection technique. They are demonstrating that the iterative reconstruction technique can result in a lower uh, radiation exposure compared to the filter back projection technique. Here is another example showing the cardiac CT and geography image um, and using a 320 detector. Um, um, this study shows uh, was done at 100 kV with a very small CTDI wall resulting in a effective dose much uh, close to 1 millisievert or 1.3 millisievert. Overall, cardiac imaging, CT imaging has evolved in the last 10 years very rapidly and has been behind the reason for many technological advances in multi detect CT. The radiation dose which we used to see in cardiac CT in 2006 and 2007 uh, was very high and now it's rapidly decreasing because of the, all the reasons we discussed earlier. Just to demonstrate also thing is there is no federal or state regulation for acceptable radiation doses for a specific CT exam. Therefore, it is upon the user to adopt these techniques to keep the radiation dose as low as possible. Thank you.